this video, we continue with chapter seven, covering chapter seven, section 7.2, diagonalization. So our learning objectives for this sequence of videos are to prove properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, find the eigenvalues of similar matrices, determine whether a matrix is diagonalizable, and to find a matrix P such that P inverse AP is diagonal. Now this is kind of arbitrary, so you're gonna see here that we could just as easily say P A P inverse is diagonal. So either way uh, is possible for these diagonalization setups. And then we're gonna find for linear transformation T mapping V to itself a basis V for the vector space V such that the matrix for T relative to the basis B is diagonal. So we say an N by N matrix A is diagonalizable when there exists an invertible matrix P such that D equals P inverse A P and that D is a diagonal matrix. So recall from section 6.4, that two square matrices A and B are similar if and only if there's an invertible matrix P such that B equals P inverse AP. So we can also say that A is diagonalizable when it is similar to this diagonal matrix D. So theorem 7.4 tells us similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. So if A and B are similar N by N matrices and they have the same eigenvalues. So let's take a look at the proof. So because A and B are similar, there exists an invertible matrix P such that B equals P inverse AP. That's based on our definition of similarity back from chapter six. So then we can say, well, let's take a look at the determinant of lambda I minus B. So that's gonna be uh, lambda times P inverse I P minus P inverse AP, just using the fact that this is B. And it's not going to change the identity matrix if we have P inverse IP over here with lambda. And then we can factor out the P inverse and the P using our matrix properties and get here P inverse multiplied by this product um, in parentheses lambda I minus A multiplied by P. And then we can use matrix properties further to say, well, this is just the determinant of P inverse multiplied by the determinant of lambda I minus A, multiplied by the determinant of P. And we know uh, the determinant of P inverse is just one over the determinant of P, multiplied by the determinant of lambda I minus A, multiplied by the determinant of P. And so that one over determinant of P and the determinant of P cancel, and we're just left with the determinant of lambda I minus A. So then uh, we must have the same eigenvalues here. So since A and B have the same characteristic polynomial, therefore they have the same eigenvalues. So in this proof, we used our matrix properties and then what we knew about the definition of similar matrices. So let's take a look at theorem 7.5. This is about what conditions we have to have for diagonalization. So an N by N or square matrix A is diagonalizable if and only if it has N linearly independent eigenvectors. So let's take a look at the proof. And our proof continues on to the next page. That's what this arrow here tells us. So first we are going to assume that A is diagonalizable. Then there's gonna exist an invertible matrix P such that D equals P inverse AP is a diagonal matrix. And then uh, multiply both sides by uh, the P. So then you get PD equals AP. Then we let the column vectors of P uh, be P1 through Pn. And then the main diagonal entries of D are gonna be lambda one through lambda n. So now uh, P times D is gonna be these column vectors of P multiplied by this diagonal matrix D with the lambda one through lambda n here on the diagonal. And then we can say, well, that's just lambda one multiplied by um, vector P1, in the first column, lambda two multiplied by vector P2 in the second column, all the way through lambda N multiplied by vector PN in the nth column. 
And then AP, the other side of our equation up here, is going to be A times the P1 through PN columns, which is just A times column P1 through A times column PN. And now we know PD equals AP, so we've got, well, API equals lambda PI for each of these N column vectors here, P1 through PN. So since P is invertible, the N column vectors are also linearly independent. And so A has N linearly independent eigenvectors. All right, so we proved the forward direction of this if and only if statement. And now we have to prove the backward direction. So when we prove the backward direction, we assume the second part is true, that A has N linearly independent eigenvectors. And then we try to prove that A must be diagonalizable. So since A has these N linearly independent eigenvectors, we'll call them P1 through Pn, and their corresponding eigenvalues are gonna be lambda one through lambda N then we're basically just gonna work backwards through what we just proved. So we're gonna let P be the matrix whose columns correspond with these N eigenvectors. And then we can check AP is gonna be matrix A times these N uh, eigenvectors. So we get here A P1 in the first column through APN in the nth column, but that's just the same as lambda one P1 in the first column through lambda N PN in the nth column. And so that's just P1 through Pn columns for matrix P multiplied by uh, lambdas on the diagonal. So we just showed that AP equals PD, where D is this diagonal matrix with the lambdas on the diagonal. And since the PIs are linearly independent, then P has to be invertible. So we've just shown that the diagonal matrix equals P inverse AP. And so that says that matrix A is diagonalizable. So we've shown both directions. So we've proved the if and only if relationship here. So let's see how this works in an example. So we're gonna diagonalize this matrix A by finding an invertible matrix P and a diagonal matrix D such that D equals P inverse AP. And then we're gonna use a characteristic polynomial to find the eigenvalues and the reduced row echelon function of our software to find the eigenvectors. So uh, A is a three by three matrix with three, two, one in the first row, and then uh, zero, zero, two in the second row, and then uh, zero, two, zero in the third row. And so when we set zero equals to the determinant, we can expand it out and see this is going to be lambda i minus matrix A here. So here's our identity matrix, and here's matrix A. And so then this works out to be lambda minus 3, lambda lambda on the diagonal. And then um, the upper part of this matrix was positive, and note it switched to negative because lambda i minus A. So we get the negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2 in the upper part of this matrix. And so uh, when we solve this, we can say, well, this is going to be lambda minus three times this determinant here by our cofactor expansion. And so we don't have to worry about the other cofactors because we've got zeros in um, row two, column one, and row three, column one. And so the determinant of the second part is lambda squared minus four. And so we've got lambda minus three times lambda squared minus four. And so that factors out to be lambda minus three times lambda minus two times lambda plus two. So here's our eigenvalues, three, negative two, and two. And so the eigenvector for lambda one equals three. Um, we plug in three to lambda i minus a, and we get this matrix right here. And then we do the reduced row echelon form, and we see we get a free variable t um, because our third row here is all zeros in the reduced row echelon form. So our solutions are in the form of x equals t zero zero for t multiplied by basis vector one zero zero. And then the eigenvector for lambda two equals negative two. Uh, we set again equal to zero and we do two times the identity matrix minus a and we get this matrix here multiplied by vector x. And then we do reduce row echelon form 
to solve. And so here's our solution. We see we're gonna again get a free variable uh, because we've got zeros in the last row here. So uh, we can say X equals one fifth T, negative T and T, or if we factor out the T, we have T multiplied by this vector, uh, one fifth, negative one and one. And then our solution continues over here to solve for that third eigenvector lambda three equals two. So two times the identity matrix minus A gives us this equation right here. And then reduced row echelon form of that matrix gives us this resultant matrix multiplied by components X1, X2, X3. So again, we have zeros in the bottom row. So we're gonna have a free variable X3 equals T. And our solution is gonna be in this form of negative three t, 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 or if we factor out t times uh, the vectors, the vector negative three, one, one. So putting those vectors into matrix form together, we get our matrix P, which is got um, the three vectors in the three columns. And then we can check on a calculator. I'll show you how to do it in SIMPY. P inverse A P gives us back out our original matrix here. So we verified this diagonalization works. In the next video, I am going to show you how to um, do this in SIMPY. And so note when I said our original matrix here, this is our matrix D here, our original diagonal matrix from the eigenvalues back here in the solution. All right, so in the next video, we'll see how to do these calculations and some be.